What up, YouTube? Welcome back to the tavern. Gonna go ahead and roll the sleeves up for this one because tonight we're bringing you uh bringing you a banger. Should be a pretty fun one. So some of you might have seen, but if you haven't already, uh, my friends at the Get Right Fantasy Network every single year they host a mock draft tournament, which I think is super super awesome. I haven't actually seen someone do one of these. Uh, it's really cool. It's a four week format, Monday through Thursday. Uh, there's gonna be uh, an open lobby. Uh, so, so obviously four drafts, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, um, format's going to change one quarterback one week, going to go to super flex the next week it is a two running back, three wide receiver, one flex tight end and five bench. So, uh, kind of like a, a pretty typical, pretty popular format for a redraft league. The idea is, uh, you hop in, you draft. And then after the end of the draft, the guys at the get right fantasy network, uh, we're going to go ahead and vote for our top six of the 12. Uh, we've got a weighted kind of scoring format there. Uh, first place vote gets you six points. Sixth place vote gets you one point. And so the idea is we're going to weigh all that, score it all up, and the top three in each draft pod get to advance to the semifinal on Friday. If you get top three in that, you get put in with the other top threes from week two, three, four, and that's going to get you into an underdog best ball draft. And that's going to become a full league, and uh, they're going to duke it out for the title of mock draft champion uh so pretty cool format really love it and uh looks like they are just getting things ready i'm not actually in the draft room we've got a mod in there running things i just want to do uh, some commentary over it i'm going to do some other videos uh later on where the draft might not be live we'll just go through uh the draft boards themselves i'll tell you uh you know which draft i ranked first second third fourth fifth six why i thought so and etc so um, a lot of this content is really for the people in the draft. They really want to know uh, how they did and you know who rated them high, low, and why. Um, but I think this is a pretty cool format to do a video for uh, as well. So hope you guys enjoy. Again, it's um, it's going to be two running back, three wide receiver, single flex, tight end, five bench, half PPR. So pretty popular format. I know PPR is becoming a little more popular than half PPR, but I think the balance of three wide receivers with the half PPR makes it uh, uh, makes it makes it pretty pretty solid there. Um, and in a start eight, I think it slightly elevates your onesie positions a little bit, um, but it seems like a pretty well rounded format to me uh, over overall. So the way I like to draft, I'd prefer PPR, right? But in uh, in this case, running backs still got to get a little bit of love going on over here. So hopefully they get started up here in uh, quite a bit. Looks like in the lobby we got Nader B10, Breaking Ball, Jake the Snake, Notar, and Poggy from the 105, Pillsbury Throw, Vince Mepstone. Got a, oh, I wish. We got Justin Herbert at the 108, Shaw Dog at the 109, Atrev 7 at the 110, Lando Nice at the 111, and Roadrunners at the 112. Don't recognize everybody. Uh, but definitely some some uh, familiar faces in here for sure. Very curious to see uh, Breaking Ball usually hangs out in the streams. Um, very very cool dude. And uh, Jake the Snake, very sharp drafter, very savvy. One of the one of the first regulars I uh, I met in that community. So let's see. I think he might uh, he might potentially be uh, be an early favorite at least in my head. We'll see. Uh, we'll see how he does. Hopefully they get going here in just a couple of minutes. But. Uh, while we're getting started, I guess a quick shameless plug. If you're not subscribed, uh, it means the world to me. Please just hit that subscribe button and it uh, uh, definitely helps me and the channel out quite a bit. And if you're not subscribed to the Get Right Fantasy Network, go check them out and our, our various affiliates. We're still, uh, well, me and a couple of the guys are a little bit new, but they've been around for uh, a couple of years, the Get Right Fantasy Network. But I'm still trying to hit that thousand subs. Love to monetize this a little bit so we can uh, do some giveaways and do all that fun content creator uh like stuff and uh produce more videos maybe actually get some production quality one of these days we'll have to see um let's see here we're running two minutes past so hopefully it doesn't take too too much longer to get this thing going i'm curious so if i was looking at somebody you know while, while i'm actually doing this i think i'll move uh I'll show you the previous draft that we had going on It's kind of interesting. Let's go ahead. We'll stop that screen. Let me show you a draft from just the other day. So this was this was the other day's draft. 
which I thought was pretty a pretty tight, pretty tight draft all around. Let me make sure you can see this just a little bit better. Let's do that. Hopefully, you guys can see that board all right there. Um, so yeah, this this was a pretty fun one. Really, really tough to grade, in my opinion. Was uh, was this draft in particular? And a funny thing is, we this is uh, this was the third draft. This was Wednesday, and so far the uh, the player and the one hundred and one has not advanced quite yet. So uh, I find that has been pretty interesting in this particular draft. The uh, thing I didn't like about the the the, the draft from the one hundred and one in particular was this year I am much preferring uh, a later quarterback. I think Allen in, in round two is uh, is a little bit rich for my blood, and I think Laporta at 3-1 is also way too rich. And I don't really like doing two, uh, two onesies. Um, if you're going to do do two of my, I prefer you, you got to take your second one after probably at least the seventh round for me this year. Um, but we'll see. I, I've seen it work out a little bit before, but I just like too many of the of the earlier picks. Um, but even if you go late, uh, this year in particular, I don't know if you guys can see the, uh, I believe it's round, um, three, four, five, six, six and seven round six and seven. I found have been pretty chock full of players that I'm really liking. I'm not liking this running back dead zone that I, Oh, you know what? The other draft is starting. So let's get that going. I'm going to go ahead and share the actual board we have going on here we go and we are off so like all the other drafts christian mccaffrey coming off the board at the 101 let's see how the wide receivers fall tyree kill at the 102 pretty close between tyreek and cd I think across multiple leagues, I want some exposures of each. In particular, though, I am liking Tyreek a little bit more because I can do the Tua stack. When Tua goes nearly undrafted, he goes you know, around 12 or later. So I think I'm preferring Tyreek to CD, but it's pretty close. I just have a, a little bit more faith uh, in, in Tyreek. I'm just not a big Cowboys fan, and I think last year was a little bit of an outlier. Um, we'll see. Jamar Chase goes, Amon Ross St. Brown before Jefferson. Uh, interesting, but uh, Jefferson has been falling a little bit with the uncertain uh, quarterback play, and um, oh, it's really just the uncertain quarterback play and how that team's gonna gonna play out. And obviously, the consistency of Amara St. Brown has been pretty fantastic. Interesting to note, though, I think Amon Ra has amazing consistency, but I really don't see him finishing. You know, as a, as a top two, maybe top three wide receiver, I think he's definitely inside the top five. But his super ceiling outcomes, I still think, are a little bit lagging. So I think I would prefer uh, Tyreek, CD, Jamar Chase, or Justin Jefferson than Amon Ross St. Brown. Bijan and Brees come off the board. Saquon goes before Gibbs. Interesting choice. We'll see if he wants to do um, Philly stack or if he's going to avoid it. Some people are really, really on Saquon Barkley, but this is definitely not, not ADP. You usually see Gibbs go before Barkley. So interesting choice there. I think the tough part with taking Barkley there is you really, really have to believe in him. Cause I do think, I mean, you are, you're clearly starting a tier down to the, the CMC Bijan Brees players. Uh, I mean, you're going to be a tier down either way, but we'll, I think, the Barkley start is probably going to take shape when we get into the next two or three rounds. Uh, there's a chance that maybe they just really like a hero RB build and they prefer Saquon to Gibbs. I'm definitely on the on the Gibbs side of things, but I was a Saquon truther from his rookie year on, and so first time he's not been on a you know bottom of the barrel offense. We'll see what that ends up being. Uh, so AJ Brown goes, then Gibbs. Uh, interesting for me that uh, Garrett Wilson and Kyron go, but Puka, Puka still on the board. Finally, Puka goes. So we've got to, we've got a zero a zero RB start here from the one ten hole. You take AJ Brown at the one ten, getting Puka back at the two at the two three. Got to feel pretty good. Pretty curious about Uno guesses uh, uh, start here with Gibbs and Taylor. I think Gibbs at the one eleven is uh, is definitely a gift in a half PPR uh, format. I love that Taylor. I think is a little bit underrated. Uh, this year, I think the team is going to have pretty good pace of play. Uh, you know, I really do think Taylor's probably going to have 20 point per game upside this year. I mean, he 
is not going to catch the passes that Gibbs has, but I do think that offense is going to move quite a bit. Sure, the touchdown upside maybe get vultured a little bit, but I think the ability for JT to have, you know, maybe not more than like eight or nine touchdowns, but I do see, you know, 13 plus uh, 100 yards rushing is absolutely in the in the possibilities for him. So I'm kind of steamed up on the indie offense, and uh, I, I like Taylor as a, a little bit of a value at the one-two turn right now. Derrick Henry at the 2-4, earliest I've seen him go. They've got this next tier of wide receivers with Marv, Drake London, Devontae Adams, and Chris Olave. I'm curious. I, I have found I've, I've been unable to take Marv that early. I want to. I just I, I actually think there's question marks. There's still a few question marks in my mind with Kyler, with his ability to. I know he's done it before. But I just think that, you know, D hop in his prime. Um, I, I think he's I just think he's going to be a better player than than Marv is year one, in my opinion, to when he was throwing the ball to D hop. So I think this is a little bit rich for me personally, but I'm happy to be proved wrong. It's definitely a fun start, uh, but we'll see how it goes. I think I would prefer Devante and Drake London to Marv, but we'll, we'll have to see. That could be a very, very target condensed offense and, you know, maybe it works out. So not going to, not, not hating the pick. I just think it's, it's interesting. I'm, I'm a little bit too nervous to take him that early personally. That being said, I don't think it's a, a tremendous gap to, to the rest there. Next running back goes uh, ETN at the two nine. Uh, interesting. So uh, always interesting to see who goes first between Debo and Ayuk. I'm definitely on the Debo train for that super top tier upside. And there's a, definitely a chance that Ayuk can get traded at any moment. And I think most landing spots are worse for him. Um, so I'm fading him a little bit. Now, I think for in my draft uh, at the, uh, the 101 to the 103, do think this turn gets pretty tricky when the wide receivers dry up um because i'm not a huge mike evans fan i think that's a, a little bit of a tear break um interesting pacheco at the 3-1 this is the earliest i have seen pacheco go usually he goes more towards the mid third round but uh, i i don't hate it devon hn big fan I'm all over hn this year um so going with the the miami stack there so we'll see if um I mean, this is a regular league format. So if I was running a five bench league, I don't think I would want Tyreek HN and then also to throw in uh, my, my quarterback in there, knowing that you're going to have three of your best players out in one week. You could totally punt it, but uh, depending on your league rules, some bench manipulations there. So a little bit more of a best ball type of start, but I'm not going to knock him too much for that. And since I just love the players uh, that much, probably my favorite start so far just because I'm, I'm so high on hn waddle goes nico goes so this is the first time i've seen nico fall to the third round he's usually been going in the second um so gotta feel gotta feel pretty good about the value there dg Moore definitely rising uh it's definitely the earliest in any of the mocks i've seen him go going here at the three five and also really like this start i'm on raw chris olave dg Moore. uh that is a ridiculously high floor each week at your top three wide receivers we'll see how the zero rb kind of ends up working out. Looks like Jake and Npagi are probably going to try to snipe each other uh, with their favorite RB picks later on. Should be one to watch. Pillsbury throw with his first running back at the 3-6. Justin Jefferson, Devontae Adams, and then Josh Jacobs. Uh, I, I I mean, if Jacobs hits on Green Bay, I think he's going to hit pretty hard, and uh, that could be a pretty a pretty dangerous start as well. But through three rounds, I think you know everyone's team looks fantastic. I'd have to take more than the seconds I am to, to, to kind of adjust Pittman, Smith, Diggs, Metcalf, and then cup cup getting into the third round. I've seen him mostly at the mid to early fourth. Uh, so it looks like he's going a little bit earlier. I don't hate it though. Uh, I, I think that could, uh, that could end up working out pretty good and probably not a big tier break between him and the wide receivers. I'm going to see in the middle of the fourth, uh, Kelsey at the three twelve, exactly the same spot. He went in the last draft, um, Laporta went at the three, one at the last draft going down here at the four, two, I definitely think Laporta belongs in the fourth round. Um, got to feel pretty good about that value Gibbs and Laporta, um, both values in my opinion. So, um, 
kind of like that start. Three wide receiver league, though, and only has Cooper Cup, who is a little bit injury prone. We'll see if he can uh, be as consistent as he once was. Probably going to give him a little bit of pause. We'll see how he, uh, I don't say digs himself out of the hole, because we're through four rounds and everyone's team still looks pretty fantastic. Not seeing any any glaring mistakes. Maybe a couple little values in my personal rankings. But Devonta Smith going at 3-8. Seems like a little bit of a value. He usually goes... No, he actually usually goes a, a little bit around there. I think uh, Waddle and Devonta Smith are pretty close together in most people's rankings. Um, Kamara rising in everyone's ranking with the Kendra Miller news looks pretty good. Josh Allen at the four. I was going to say first quarterback off the board is Josh Allen at the four eight zero RB start and then getting pretty big gift of Josh Allen at the four eight. I know I said that I like late quarterback, like almost totally punting it, given that you can get Goff, Stafford, Tua almost free in these types of drafts. And I, I think almost all of them have, you know, around top top five is a stretch because they don't really have legs, but top seven upside. Absolutely. And I, you know, honestly top five upside, if the touchdowns go their way with how strong those offenses could potentially be. Um, so liking that quite a bit. Next running backs of the board, cook and Mixon. Interesting that white goes at the four, three, actually that's a little bit shocking to me. I, uh, I usually see in my own personal rankings, I have Cook ahead of White. Uh, White and Walker are usually closer. I have White closer to that Walker Mixon tier. Um, a lot of people think their White just has to lose a lot of volume, both in attempts and receptions. And if that goes down by 15% or so, um, yeah, it's just hard hard to see him having an, an elite high upside finish with uh, with, with the usage. Um but definitely, a, I think, a safe pick in my mind. I just prefer the upside uh, of Cook, personally. Um, but pretty similar tiers. Uh, Amari Cooper at the 4-4. Zay Flowers at the 4-5. And Neighbors at the 4-6. I think Neighbors has been going a little bit earlier. Uh, so probably liking the value that uh, that went there. So we've got a couple hero RB starts from the 7-8 and eight spot. A couple of other balanced builds. Another zero RB and Poggy at the 105. Trey McBride going in the fifth. First time I've seen Trey McBride fall to the fifth. I think he usually goes uh, late fourth, but um, not a big discrepancy there. Very balanced from the ball. We got two wide receivers, two running backs, and McBride. So I, I like that. Gives himself a lot of possibilities. It's really nice starting with a balanced start like that. When you are so close to a turn, you're probably going to be less in a spot where you have to reach for anything, which is usually you typically have to do sometimes at the turn. Um, so I, I, I do kind of like that start of, of staying balanced. And uh, the 101 hole. So after going uh, McCaffrey and then uh, Evans Pacheco, we've got uh, Christian Kirk and George Pickens. I think that's one of the earliest, uh, some of the earliest I've seen Christian Kirk go. Um, that being said, don't hate the pick. Like the Pickens pick quite a bit more. Uh, interesting that he went uh, with the Kirk Pickens instead of uh, definitely decided intentionally chose to pass on McBride, Kincaid, and Andrews. We'll uh, we'll see how that ends up panning out. And Poggy breaks the zero RB, takes his first running back in James Conner. Uh, I know the the fantasy footballers in particular have been uh, uh, very high on uh, on James Conner historically. Obviously, they're they're Cardinals guys, but they've always seen Conner as a pretty big value. I'm curious. I I do think that Conner could be a pretty huge value this year if he can stay healthy and really just seed a couple of third downs here and there to Trey Benson. But we'll have to see. I think the talent of Trey Benson just has to start eating into that workload at some point. But uh, I do think for at least the first half of the season, um, Connor's going to have a a lot to work with there and him getting spelled a time or two for an explosive uh, guy like Trey Benson, who you might, he might have a smaller snap share than we think, but that might make sense for him. Probably keep Connor a little bit healthy as well. Um, and if that offense um, moves the pace play, I hope they do. And their defense doesn't look fantastic. I do think there is um, opportunities for both of them. Mahomes at the at the five eight got to feel like a pretty good value. Um, I remember when you can get Mahomes last year in best ball in the fifth round. That was fantastic. One of my favorite picks. Um, so as you can see, a quarterback's definitely falling in this draft. First quarterback Allen at the four eight, and then Hertz and Mahomes falling to the fifth. Hertz I've seen go in the late third in most drafts, if not early fourth, falling all the way to the mid fifth has to feel pretty good. Um, But for, 
I, it's hard to call it a value. I think it is absolutely a value. But again, I think most people that have seen the previous couple of drafts have noticed that everything feels like a value when you can get top tier quarterbacks, in my opinion, uh, late, but specifically hurts with those legs. I think he keeps it, but I do think Saquon plus having a new center. I think that 20 touchdown ceiling might come down just a little bit for Hertz, but I think the passing does improve. Not my favorite pick this year, but you, you can't, you can't hate on Jalen Hertz. I, I don't think so. We'll, we'll see how the Hertz and Mahomes owners like how their draft shapes up. Tank Dell goes off the board. Godwin, another couple of running backs in Swift and Montgomery. Uh, Lamar Jackson, again, late, uh, late fifth. So if you're, if you're looking at like over the past three years, ADP, this is definitely the latest. I think you've seen, uh, this group of quarterbacks go. So pretty interesting with the lobby all kind of agreed. Hey, we're, uh, we're all going to see who can wait outweigh each other. Definitely like an Ahrefs start kind of went with, he broke his zero RB with white, not my favorite pick, but uh, I do like Deandre Swift. I think he's getting a little bit slept on. So interesting there. Uh, Laporta, when he comes off at four, two, then Lamar at five eleven. One of the old adages is be a little cautious about getting two onesies early in these drafts as you can pinch yourself out of the most important uh, skill positions. So we'll see if they can get enough value later on in the draft. Also being at a turn, uh, we'll, we'll see how that plays out a little bit risky, but I, I, uh, I think it can, it can work out. It definitely can be some upside if good players uh, in particular targets uh, fall that, that could work. Got some hesitancy. We'll see how it goes. Monty goes at the five twelve. little couple wide receivers, Terry McLaurin, followed by Calvin Ridley, then Jaden Reed at the 6-3. I saw Jaden Reed go at the 6-12 in the last draft, and it had to be my favorite pick in the entire draft. It was, And then I think McConkie at the 7-1. Really, really like um, uh, this range of wide receivers a lot. I don't see them as massive tier breaks to the wide receivers going two and three rounds ahead of them, and I think they have um, you know almost equal upside to, to finish you know, even above some of those wide receivers. So if you can get Jaden Reed, Calvin Ridley at 6'2", 6'3", I think it really makes picks like Neighbors, Flowers, Cooper look a little bit worse. Um, but it is what it is. I think here, in my opinion, is where the running back dead zone starts with Ramondre, Zamir, Najee, Aaron Jones. Um, you got to draft a running back at some point if you go wide receiver heavy. Um, but we'll see. When I looked back and analyzed all these drafts, in my opinion, the the, the guys that were going in this range felt very similar to the guys you were going to be able to get in the at least eighth and ninth, 10th. I think 10th started to really dry up, but I think the eighth and ninth, it, it felt there wasn't a huge difference in my opinion. So we'll, we'll see how that ends up playing out. Deontay Johnson at the six eleven got to be a pretty great value. I think the, the target upside, I mean, I like him a little bit more in PPR because I think the touchdowns are going to be low, but I think the targets and catches are going to be quite high, higher than people are giving him credit for. He does, he does win by getting separation is a crisp route runner, savvy enough to get open and, and still was productive, even with, you know, oftentimes poor quarterback play and even poor, uh, offensive coordination. So, um, we'll see what he can do. I, 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 I like what that offense could potentially do, but we'll see if Bryce, uh, can can deliver. We'll have to see. Uh, CJ Stroud finally goes at the at the seven two, and I was going to say Burrow usually goes around this range as well. Finally goes off the board there. What did Nader do with the turn here? Uh, Mostert at the six twelve. Mostert feels like it could be value. Uh, I mean, even if Mostert seeds a little bit of work to Devin H N, that offense still explosive. If Mostert stays healthy and when he's healthy, right? This is this is redraft. If he's injured, you can you can put someone else in, right? Um, I think there's a good chance Mostert outscores Aaron Jones, Najee, Zamir, and Ramondre on a significantly better offense and has clearly shown it. So that looks like it could be a value compared to players that went earlier. We've got a little bit of quarterback run starting with uh, Kyler going right after Burrow there. One of my favorite picks in the entire draft I didn't talk about yet is Anthony Richardson falling to the 6-6. Uh, I find it incredibly hard to pass on him in the fifth. Uh, he's just one of my favorite players to draft. He's got the stack with Pittman as well. That feels really, really nice. One of my favorite drafts right now, for sure. Starting hero RB, taking the favorite wide receiver at the tier at different spots here. And I like basically all of these picks that I'll go through later on and uh, see if I would have taken anyone else. I mean, I might've gone Devonte over Drake London, but 
just because I maybe don't want to own Bijan and Drake London on the same team. Um, so I think I probably just to split that up would have gone uh, uh, Devante, but that's that's fine. Uh, love Pittman in the third, though, and I think Neighbors has pretty huge upside there. Tank Dell, a little bit slept on. I think he could be the wide receiver one for that team on a points-per-game basis. Uh, we'll have to see how that offense shapes up. Really great start there. Then going Tony Pollard at the 7-7 seven, seven there. She Rice finally goes at seven eight, and uh, Dak at the seven nine saw Dak go down in like the the ninth tenth rounds in uh, in in uh, other drafts. So looks like uh, uh, Shaw Dog really was wanting to um, uh, grab his quarterback. So he goes Pitts six four locks up Prescott. So pretty interesting. Obviously, it's a uh, filling out running backs, wide receivers, and then the onesies, giving us a, a nice nice color palette there. Don't love Pitts at the six, four. And I, I do think when you look at Dak still has top five upside, he finishes what QB four last year. Again, I just think with what you're able to get five to six rounds later, I think it's a little bit early, but that's again, that's my take. Well, we'll have to see five quarterbacks in this round with uh, Jordan love finally going off the board. Curious on this Tony Pollard pick. I was going to say, I really liked the seven spots draft over here, but in my opinion, I think you could have waited on Pollard. I'm just, I'd have to see what else I would have taken. It's probably a situation where didn't like a lot of the players and just, you know, took someone he, he likes. Pollard definitely has some upside in that offense. Maybe there's a chance that Pollard was just a little banged up and he's healthier this year, gets his efficiency numbers back, um, and that offense. Uh, the offensive line is significantly improved. Um, so there's, I don't think there's a lead upside, but I do think and his ADP Pollard can definitely outproduce some of the guys that went in the, in the sixth Brooks, one of my favorites going on at the seven 11. I think that's the type of build to take Brooks in where you already are super solid uh, at RB and you don't have to, uh, in a previous draft, I think it was victorious who took Brooks and Aaron Jones. I, and I thought that was a, it's just, not my favorite pairing knowing the Aaron Jones. He's old. He has a bit of an injury history going on. Um, and then Brooks will start the season injured. So I didn't want to add too, too much risk um, at the position. But Brooks, after you have Gibson Taylor, uh, feels pretty good. Also, I think probably allows them to go hyper fragile. I don't think Uno Gas has to draft more than one more running back if he wants to. Um, we knew he took those onesies. So ends up with Cup. That was pretty shaky as his wide receiver one. Ends up getting Ridley at the 6-2, which I think is a value. Ridley or Reed, I think, would have been uh, my pick there and really, really liking it. Uh, and then uh, I think rescuing himself with uh, with Ladd, knowing, getting either Ladd or Christian Watson, I think, in this range is pretty nice. But I think Ladd is, is the much safer pick, in my opinion. You can even consider Addison there. But with the potential suspension as, uh, as currently a starter on the roster, I can see why they went McConkey. So really excited to see how Uno guesses. Um, draft ends up being so far looking looking pretty nice. I said Tua goes almost free, and he goes in the uh, at the eight hundred one. So uh, last draft, uh, he literally went in the thirteenth round to an auto picked person, so he would have gone probably undrafted. Um, so we'll see. Maybe Tua is a pretty uh, a pretty swingy player. I think probably is going to be. Um, again, I'm not super upset if I miss on Tua. There's still Stafford and there's still golf for me. So I just love these late ranges. Uh, I'm finding it hard to take a quarterback inside the, the, the top 10, but we'll see Caleb Williams still on the board. We'll uh, see if we have any, any believers there. Uh, but let's get through the rest of this round. Jalen Warren finally comes off at eight, six uh, to Vince over here. So he takes power in the seventh and then comes back with another running back in Jalen Warren. So it looked like, they, the plan here was to solidify RB before, in their mind, they see an RB cliff, uh, which very much could be. I mean, they're, they're, you're seeing a little bit of running back run. Singletary goes. Brian Robinson, the Gus bus, finally goes. Uh, so I think this is a strategy that might actually end up uh, paying off. Um, and there's definitely some stability with those two picks. So again, they might want to go a little bit more fragile and only draft four, five at the absolute most. But I think you probably get away with four four running backs and feel pretty good. We'll see what their what their later on dart throws end up being in the position. Jordan Addison at 8-7 feels like a pretty fantastic value. Again, a little risky as the wide receiver three. This this player has to start. Um 
but I think, uh, well, this is Addison on the Jefferson team. So actually we got, I got to knock that a little bit. Um, the two, the two Minnesota players in the same team. Um, not a big fan of that really lowers, you know, overall upside, but, um, Oh, yeah, just uh, just one man's opinion over here. Xavier Worthy finally goes at the 808, kind of rounding off all of the popular rookies. Um, I think I forgot to mention Cole Coleman. Keon Coleman went at the 712. I'm trying to see where if I'm missing the rest of the rookies because it does look like BTJ. Okay, BTJ finally goes to the 94. So Coleman ends up being the first rookie that goes. Looks like he's really getting steamed up. Coleman won lad two. Worthy three BTJ four. So interesting. And then normally goes in order, you know, worthy BTJ and then Ladd and Coleman are pretty close. Uh, so just curious. Uh, I don't think anything's necessarily good or bad. Uh, I'm definitely super getting steamed on Coleman, but we'll get back to the, uh, get back to the board here. A lot of wide receivers and running backs. Looks like, I mean, most of the tight end. So, you know, uh, in the seventh round, you know, Kittle Ingram, Jake Ferguson's kind of everyone's like backstop the last of like could still produce pretty reasonable numbers. Uh, so I think we're, we're pretty much done with tight end quarterbacks went, I want to say earlier, but uh, uh, only one. There's only one, only the one one doesn't have a quarterback, so he can wait as long as he wants to. Uh, and I, 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 if you're him and you, you still get your choice of whoever you want to out of that, that late tier that I was talking about. So. Other interesting choices, Curtis Samuel going uh, earlier than Jamison Williams. A little bit interesting. I think the overall upside of Jamison is probably a little bit higher than Curtis Samuel. A lot of mouths to feed uh, in Buffalo. Um, more of a condensed uh, offense in Detroit. Huge uh, confidence from the coach. Uh, Zach Mosco is curious to see where Chase Brown goes. Uh, huge camp hype. I think Chase Brown is starting to go pretty close to Moss. Some people... See, Chase Brown is more valuable uh, than Moss with the pass catching uh, upside. But um, that's obviously a little spicy, I think. But I, I think they're starting to go almost in the same round in many cases. So really curious to see where Chase Brown goes. D Hop at the 9 6, obviously falling due to the injury news today. Um, hopefully that doesn't linger into the season too, too much. Dubes at the 9 7, this could be a pretty smash pick. Obviously, he's got some camp hype, but we know that Dubes was already a big part of that offense. The offense should be fantastic. Um, I think pretty much every wide receiver in green Bay could potentially pay off their ADP since none of them are going ridiculously early in drafts. Um, you know, when in doubt, sometimes just go with the cheapest wide receiver. And in this case, the cheapest starter uh, looks to be due. So, or Dobbs, sorry. Uh, Taji Spears goes off the nine, eight. So interesting discrepancy Pollard at the seven, seven Spears at the nine eight. I do like Pollard a hair more than Spears, but two round discrepancy, I would definitely prefer Spears. And this is kind of what I was talking about, where when you see the running backs that went around six, specifically Aaron Jones, Najee Harris, Amir White, and Ramondre Stevenson, look at what I think you can get in the eighth, ninth, and tenth with you know Jalen Warren, still a great pick. I think Austin Eckler has still a decent amount of life left. We'll catch a lot of passes. He honestly might just be straight up be a better runner than Brian Robinson at this point. There's a chance he could become the one a instead of the one B the wealth kind of think he is um, not. I mean, it's within a range of outcomes, right? Uh, Jerome Ford, Deonta Foreman, obviously had a big scare. Looks like he's going to be okay. Thank God. Um, but with Chubb, not ready to start Ford could be pretty elite to start the season. Really liking that pick. And then, uh, you know, Javante, no one's favorite pick, but getting what I take Javante in the 10th, over Zamir White, Najee Harris, you know, four rounds earlier. Uh, I think watching these drafts in particular has helped me out a ton for my draft prep. You got to really read the runs, but I, I do think, you know, just be careful about this running back dead zone because, you know, down on the ninth and 10th, there's just such a value that you just, the range of outcomes is, 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 is more fine if they don't hit. And then, uh, yeah, Trey Benson, 10, five chase Brown, 10, six. I love this whole range of Corum Williams, Benson Brown, really liking this 10th round. Jacoby Myers kind of slept on for me at the 10-1 there too. I think uh you know he 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 overperformed in Vegas. 
was quite good. I don't think the offense is going to be fantastic, but if Zamir in the running game can't get it together, I do think there's a lot of targets coming uh, his way and Devontae Adams way as Adams gets up in age injury risk, maybe increases a little bit there. Um, and I think Jacoby could be in a position to, you know, I don't think he's going to shatter any records or anything, but I do think he is the quintessential, like Jacoby Myers is kind of like this year's Tyler Lockett for me, where he's just going to outproduce his ADP pretty consistently. Just be a, a, a sort of a lower tier version of that player. Khalil Shakir, Ezekiel Elliott, Josh Palmer, got Charbonnet going. Uh, first player taking a, a second wide receiver. This is kind of interesting. So you've got an elite, you know, top three, four wide receiver and Trey McBride also going with Bowers. I think it's a little interesting for me. I don't see any range of outcomes for Bowers ever starts over Trey McBride outside of one bye week. Um, and I really don't think in a non tight end premium format, you're going to want to flex Bowers. So really not in love with that pick breaking ball. Love to hear your logic and kind of what you're, what you're thinking there. Uh, and also grabbing the backup QB in Purdy with how deep the quarterback position is that you can pick up on the waiver wire this year in particular. Um, not really loving the 10th and 11th here breaking ball. Um, love you, buddy. Absolutely love you. But I'm, I'm going to have to hear, going to have to hear the logic on, on these two picks. Again, one man's opinion. I don't win every tournament or league that I play in. So always room for, for other opinions to be valid. Jalen Polk making a pretty good case to at a minimum. Seems like Jalen Polk is going to start and, and, you know, have a 70, 75% plus snap share immediately if not outright becoming the wide receiver one relatively quickly. I'm loving that pick. I'm loving the upside. Again, Jake the Snake never really disappoints, but I got to kind of look at the draft a little bit. I think Kincaid at the 5-3 was a good value. Mixon has a very good chance to outproduce uh, his ADP at the at the 4-10 there. Um, he's not my favorite running back in the world, but you got to take somebody at some point, and I think where that ranges, it's fine. Aaron Jones, not my absolute favorite, as I kind of previously mentioned, would have rather waited you know, if I, I think I would have, instead of Aaron Jones there, I would have rather gone like Deontay Johnson or Hollywood Brown. And then instead of Rome, uh, going with like an Eckler or a Moss, obviously he ended up getting Moss, but you get the idea. I, or, or, or yeah. Um, but not, not a, not a huge deal, just a kind of a personal preference there. Let's catch back up to the, to the board. Look at some of these late round dart throws. So we like Polk. Dentavian Wicks. Obviously, people are really getting steamed up on him in the 11th round. I think it's perfectly fine. I think the entire Packers team is going to go into a rotation. Kind of everyone just hopes whoever you take, there's at least one or two other injuries at some point in time. And, you know, that could be likely. Um, uh, but I, I I do like the the upside in general. I think he's more of a best ball pick for me personally because I don't know when. I think he's going to be one of those situations where he could be like a Gabe Davis, but much more talented. You just don't know when he's going to pop off. And there's a billion mouths to feed. So we'll see how that goes. But again, fun pick. And I like him. Um, Tyler Lockett and Josh Downs, I think, are pretty elite picks in this particular range um, for what they can do. Josh Downs was looking so good to start the year. Very talented wide receiver. Got some combine hype. That offense should be good. I think Josh Downs is going to be the clear cut wide receiver, too. Well, I like A.D. Mitchell. I just don't think A.D. Mitchell as a rookie is going to be better than 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 Josh Downs going into year two and uh, justin herbert over here at the one eight takes uh finally grabs a tight end dalton schultz at the 11 eight feels like pretty good value obviously uh, when people are grabbing kittle and ingram in the seventh round schultz not in the same sphere as them but that offense could be pretty great a lot of mouths to feed but that means there still should be some pretty good upside for dalton schultz uh gonna be hard to you know cover everyone in that offense so i you know I, I want to see a tight end in a touchdown heavy offense where they're just in an ecosystem where they can thrive since that position, you know, even at the top, you know, you're going to see bad games from McBride, Kincaid and Andrews. It's, it's, it's going to happen at a rate where you're just not going to see it from some of the wide receivers in that range. So pretty good value in Schultz, I think, in my opinion. J.K. Dobbins goes 11-9, one of my uh, favorite picks there as well. I think a great value with Javante at the 10-4. I think J.K. Dobbins has a chance to sort of be like the 1B. I think there's an, an actual chance he could be the 1A. I I don't know. I, I saw him run on basically one leg, and he was still decent. I mean, he might be the one player in history that can recover from just a billion injuries. I don't know. I, I'm rooting for it. I want to see it happen. Um, it's not likely... But in the 11th round, 
this is almost, you know, drop candidates at some point. So I guess I should probably scroll down, should show you guys a little bit more of the board. Let me, uh, let me move over here so you guys can see the board a little bit better. They run stuff. So Goff goes in the 11th. Stafford goes in the 11th. Jaden Daniels finally goes in the 12th round. I, I'm guessing uh, uh, the 101 here, Nader, probably a little upset, was probably really hoping for Goff, Stafford, or Jaden Daniels. All of them go. I can almost assuredly tell you he wanted one of those guys. Um, so we'll see. Probably going to end up going. I think maybe Caleb Williams or Justin Herbert, I would imagine. We'll see what he ends up going with. A um, lot of backup tight ends, by the way. Got backup tight end from the 12 spot, from the 9 spot. Uh, by the way, Vince going with uh, late Pat Fryer. with one of my absolute favorite uh, late round tight ends right now with the um, uh, the injury to Roman Wilson. The offense was already looking like it was going to be pretty target condensed. Um, I already thought Pat Fryer was a good tight end. It was just part of a a really bad offense with, with bad offensive play calling, with bad quarterback play. You can say what you want about Russell Wilson, but I know he's comfortable throwing tight ends. Brian Moose, a good tight end. Russ is clearly an upgrade to the ridiculously shoddy quarterback play of last year. And uh, the offense as a whole, I think, uh, is going to take a step forward. So I think Friar Muth tends to benefit from basically all of those things all the most. Uh, so I think he's a good value. I don't see him as, in, in as a top five in terms of range of outcomes, you know, maybe a 1% chance. But I do think he can crack probably the top seven, top eight. Uh, again, Jason Moore of the fantasy footballers uh, uh, kind of spoke about that, I think. I, I texted it in our in our group uh, chat with uh, with the get right. My my immediate take as soon as I saw the Roman Wilson injury was, man, I think Friar Muth is going to uh, in, inherit a lot of these targets early in the season. So um, definitely agree with with Jason on that one. Kendry Miller at the 12 seven kind of the uh, contrarian pick, right? Every his ADP is falling because of the camp news. And, um, uh, you know, maybe they're the, the team is not as down on him as they think. Rico Dattel. Jaleel McLaughlin, Elijah Missel, and Antonio Gibson. I think Jaleel's got some upside. Rico Dowdle has a little bit of upside there. Uh, obviously, CMC gets hurt. The interesting thing is, like, I think Elijah Mitchell might be more injury prone than Christian McCaffrey. Uh, so is he really a handcuff? It's kind of interesting. But, uh, you know, Garendo is uh, is injured. So uh, Mitchell, when he plays, though, when he's, when he's healthy in that offense, um, he's talented. We've always thought he was talented. And when he's healthy in that offense, he can do some some pretty good things. So good thing there. Uh, Nader finally goes with his quarterback. Uh, Darnell Moody running at the uh, wide receiver. F- yes, wide receiver four for the no one, two, three, four. wide receiver five. I think he's a, he's actually going to be a pretty decent weapon in that offense. Mike Williams, Marshawn Lloyd, um, backup quarterback here in Caleb Williams. Again, I'm not a fan of backup quarterback or tight end in thin bench formats. I just think they're going to get dropped before you actually ha- have a chance to really use them. But I, I, I think I'd make an exception for like Caleb and Jaden Daniels. Cause you know, what if he is the next Mahomes? What if he is the next Lamar? You're probably going to know within a game or two. So I think when you're taking your, your last round pick or two, you very much want a player that within honestly, the first game maximum, you know, two games, but you want to see game one, like, you want to be a player in a position or in a role where you either know or don't know uh, if if you if you hit down that pick or not, and so you can drop very very quickly. Rounding it out, Kamani Vidal, Jalen Wright, Traylon Burks. Uh, I don't know about that one, but I, I guess with uh, with the injury to to D Hop, maybe there's a path there. I don't really see it. You know, I, I think there's more upside in taking a running back here personally. I would definitely I'm surprised he goes undrafted. Hot waiver wire pick it, get get Dylan Lauby or Loeb Lauby. Someone tell me how you actually pronounce it. Um, would have been a better pick there. Pop Douglas. Oh, well, I want to see what he does there. We got a backup and Justin Herbert. I'm on the Herbert train this year. I I I, I can I mean someone someone I think the team's gonna run the ball a lot. Okay. I think they're gonna run the ball a decent clip. I don't know why everyone is saying they're going to run the ball more than any team in history. They might do nothing but just run the ball. So Herbert's going to suck, and the wide receivers are just not good enough. For Herbert is so good. The weapons are a downgrade. At the same time, Mike Williams was, like, always hurt. I think he's been a little bit of an overrated wide receiver. I think DJ Shark might be a little underrated after some poor performances and injuries, but I don't think he's terrible. Uh, I I've got 
a lot of confidence that that team will maybe not throw the ball more than people think, but I think they'll have a very efficient passing game, which will be much better than what they had been doing previously, which was not the most efficient passing game. Um, way, way too many, not three and outs, but just way too many drives that are not ending in, in, in three or six, um, just not coming. So I don't know. That's just my, my personal take. I think Herbert's going to surprise people and outperform his, his ADP and uh, Alexander Madison to, to round out the draft. So here was round, uh, this is round four. Yeah. Round four in the books. Pretty pretty fun stuff taking a taking a quick peek just overall observations reasonable amount of grabbing a second uh, like a backup tight end and a backup quarterback not really a fan in this format i think in a six bench spot format it's a i'll say understandable i'm still not doing it seven bench okay seven bench spots i you know take you know take an extra dart throw you know, especially if you're going, you know, maybe going two late quarterbacks and hoping one of them works out doing the Steelers thing. Right. Um, but especially if you're. Let's say like the, the 13 five, there wasn't Caleb Williams. Let's say that was Herbert or something. We see Lamar Jackson, right? Uno gas is picked there. Not really sure. So, I mean, if, if Lamar gets hurt, you're the way you win the league, right, is you need Lamar. You draft him with your fifth round pick. You really need him to do great things. If he gets injured, I don't like the the idea that, well, if he gets injured, I still have, you know, like the QB 12. It's like, yeah, you still have the QB 12. You were probably going to be able to stream the QB 13 or 14 off the waiver wire. Um, so again, I mean, for me, instead of Herbert, I would rather go with like a running back that could potentially really surprise or shock by the time week one comes around right? Or where an injury could really elevate their position or someone whose role, they're kind of in an, an ambiguous, ambiguous situation and they could uh, not have the role we all expected. So just my personal take on, on, on a couple of those situations. So where's my zero RB guys? Did anyone go true zero RB? I'm not seeing it. I think the, the hardest core zero RB I'm seeing is starting three wide receivers and then running back at four. So no zero RB drafters. Which a half PPR, probably understandable. Really should only go zero RB in um, full PPR formats. So good decision there. Hero RB, where are my hero RB drafters? So we have Vince went with the hero RB, not starting with Bijan, taking his second RB in the seventh round. I think hero RB for me is at least is at least through six. You know, you only have you only have one one RB. Um, so that works. Justin Herbert takes his second in the sixth, though kind of mirroring a little bit what the the seven spot did. Bijan then Pollard in the seventh, Brees Hall with then Ramondre in the the sixth there. Definitely prefer the Bijan Pollard in the seventh uh, draft, but they they have very very mirrored drafts. Those two, honestly, obviously start hero RB wide receiver heavy, and then an elite, you know, in my opinion, top three quarterback. Since I have a rich as my QB three this year, uh, and I've got Josh Allen, Mahomes, Richardson. I have Richardson ahead of Hertz and ahead of Lamar Jackson. Spicy take, but uh, I'm sticking by it. So curious to see. I think both of those I'm probably going to rate pretty highly. I just I like that structure. I'll have to go into the individual picks and see how it goes. For going hero RB, they both ended up with one, two, three, four, five. They both ended up with five RBs. Um, their fifth being last round dart throws, uh, and I think that can make a lot of sense. And those are types of players I think that could make a lot of sense. Again, I'm a Div Dylan uh, uh, Dylan Lobby Lobe from uh, the the Vegas uh, running back with the pass catching chops. I think. He's one of my favorite late round dart throws. Kamani Vidal, I'm just, I'm not, I'm not really in. I don't see how he super cracks over. Like if JK is like somewhat healthy, I just think JK is going to get, he has the experience over Kamani Vidal. And I think overall talent pedigree, I mean, if he's healthy enough, Kamani's going to have to be a straight up better athlete to get in over Dobbins. And the Gus bus is just very proven well coached, uh, you know, most people coming out of the out of, of a Ravens organization are are going to be relatively high character, but disciplined um, 
player. So I, I just don't think Kamani Vidal has too, too much. But I think the idea here is Dobbins, a lot of injuries going on there, right? Gus Edwards already injured a couple times in the preseason and is getting a little bit up there in age. So I think the Kamani pick is really a, there's a lingering injury plus a week one injury and Kamani inherits it. So again, I, I could see the path there. And then right, same thing, uh, two, two fragile RBs ahead on, in this case, an explosive offense. So that's the type of late round dart throw where they're going to get dropped if something doesn't happen week one. So I'm not going to fault them. So five RBs, you wouldn't say that's a hero RB build, but they really each have four RBs. That late round dart throw just probably should be a running back in most cases anyways, especially in half PPR. Um, that's just kind of something. I, I don't know who did more of a deep dive on it, but the general idea is if you look at like late round league winners in the best ball format, that's where most people kind of do the, the, the homework on this sort of stuff. Um, the Pukas don't come around all the time, right? But the Kyron Williams of the world, that does happen and does happen very consistently. Um, so that's, that's why I'm liking those late round picks. Those two will probably, and they both only took the one tight end, which I think is the way to go. So they're probably going to be in my top six. Other interesting choices. Well, I don't want this video to go too, too long, so I won't break down everything. Going to have to take a, a solid look at the 101. Generally like what I'm seeing with the super punting at the uh, at the quarterback and then not drafting. I'm uh, not drafting either onesie until the 10th round, really the 13th, since it's the 10, 12 that Njoku goes. By the way, fantastic value, I think. And then Trevor Lawrence at the 13th one. And um, that's interesting. I know Lawrence, everyone's talking about him is there's no ceiling. He's so meh. Maybe I, I, I want to agree because that's just what I've seen. And he's had so many chances, but if I really look at, I'm kind of saying, Hey, I think he was one of the more unlucky quarterbacks. You know, he lost an entire year to that coaching disaster. Um, he, he hasn't always been surrounded by, he's had good weapons, but certainly not, not elite weapons. You know, ETN certainly did a lot of the, 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 the work there. Well, we'll see what BTJ can do to that offense. If BTJ and if Gabe Davis can at least stretch the field and do a, you know, you, you either be, keep him honest or you burns you. Uh, I think between him and BTJ and honestly, Christian Kirk, you've got you've got a lot of speed and you've got a lot of guys that can go deep i do see a path to where if if, if some if the offensive play caller over there and don't ask me who it is in jacksonville i don't know if they decide they play a bunch of madden one day they're like hey let's just get crazy with it i see a path to to a little bit more upside when you're drafting him at the 13 one too i think it can make uh, a lot of sense in my opinion though just me i think at the 11 one when your drafts already very complete, things are looking pretty good. I think I would have gone with you know, uh, Goff, Stafford, or Jaden Daniels. Goff has the, uh, the the projected number two offense according to Vegas. Stafford significantly improved offensive line. If Cup is healthy, him and Puka are a force to be reckoned with, and I think uh, that could be a pretty elite. Both could be top five. Jaden Daniels, we know what rushing quarterbacks can do. If he also has the throwing chops that I think he certainly can, right? I, I'm not expecting it, but I think he can. Uh, I, I would have preferred the upside to either of those, but maybe there's a particular take on, on Lawrence there. Um, I, I like Pacheco at the three one. Uh, I'm not going to between Pacheco and HN. I think they're both fine picks. Pacheco maybe being, bringing a little bit of stability. And I think there's, there's, Definitely, it's reasonable to say, hey, I think Mostert is a screaming value. I'm going to fade HN if it's close as a tiebreaker so I can get Mostert later and getting Mostert at the 612, which I like as probably my favorite running back pick in that round, anyways. Uh, so that actually worked out in his favor quite a bit now that I'm thinking about it. So McCaffrey, Pacheco, and then Mostert and the Gus Bus. That is, that is an, a really nice looking uh, running back room. Uh, if I don't say so myself, that's, that's, that's pretty nice. And then Mike Evans, Christian Kirk Pickens, Hollywood Brown. So there's a lot of people that have him, uh, notched, obviously going two running backs in the first three rounds. There's what, one, 
to three teams that went three wide receivers through three and uh, several uh, with uh, there's one with four wide receivers through five. Most people have at least uh, three wide receivers through five, but him uh, Kirk and Pickens compared to, you know what I'm seeing from other that's there's upside there. So now I'm looking at the Lawrence was, was stacked with Kirk. Evans is kind of not my favorite this year. I like, don't love Kirk. I really do like Pickens, but I have to say if Evans does what he did last year, if, if Kirk stays healthy in an elevated, like when Kirk does well, Lawrence will clearly do well and vice versa. So I like the correlation in terms of the range of outcomes for the team. I'll look at that team a little bit more. I, I, I'm probably not going to see it as a super, super top tier team just because the, the wide receivers are not my favorite, but I, I, it's going to be hard to see that team not in my top six just because the running back core is so solid and it came at very little cost uh, and got a value at tight end. Um, solid, solid draft. Probably, a, I mean, definitely above average. So I could go on this for, for a long time. Obviously, we're just breaking down, but here was the draft. I, uh, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed. This is a super fun mock draft tournament. The, uh, the lobbies are open for next week's drafts monday through thursday uh there's openings for for all four days if you haven't got your seat i highly recommend you do we are going to be promoting this everywhere in all of our uh you know in all of our own individual leagues trying to get our uh our, our friends and league mates uh, uh up in the tournament and uh so definitely try to get your spot but if not we got four weeks of this obviously there is time but uh we want to get them filled uh, as soon as possible Super fun. Uh, hop in the comments. Honestly, I, I will probably, I'm going to probably upload this tonight and then uh, I'm going to do the rankings. All of us will actually probably do our rankings by 1 p.m. tomorrow. Uh, so anyone that's watching this, definitely hop in the comments. Uh, I would love to hear from you. Um, what was your favorite draft? I'm going to have to rank the top six in order. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, so g- give me your thoughts. If you have a top, uh, top one, a top three, uh, uh, definitely this this was the favorite draft uh, i i, I want to hear your your thoughts uh maybe favorite pick in a certain round best value i would love to hear what that is i'll probably drop uh drop a couple of comments myself on this just so you know my thoughts on my favorite picks so i don't make this video go any longer than it has to be it's been real youtube like and subscribe if you haven't already it helps me out a ton it, it literally it'll take you Three seconds. If you're watching this right now, just take the cursor, go hit subscribe. Uh, I promise you will not regret it. I'll appreciate it sincerely. I will. I will see my sub count go up one, and it will be a great day for me. And uh, I will. I will appreciate it very, very much. So, thank you for for all those that do. I sincerely appreciate it, and I look forward to answering your questions and uh, commenting back on any of your uh, comments on the video. Y'all have a great rest of your night. It's been real. Catch you on the next one. Cheers.